So, Petriart technique, the most important things you need to know to get an awesome result with Petri technique, first of all, you need to choose clear, dense, clean inks. That is, they should be saturated, they need to have a good amount of pigment. The main trouble with inks is they fade very quickly. That's why you need to pay attention and control which company to choose because inks fade, consequently they fade intensely. They change color due to the resin's temperature and Petriart isn't performed in temperature mode. That is, we don't work with liquid resin in Petriart. We work only with resin that has gained viscosity. You can create a Petriart with any viscosity of the resin, but you need to treat each viscosity separately. Keep liquid a little longer. The average is classically there for 15 to 17 minutes. It all depends on the lifetime. That is, in the instructions you take your resin and read its lifetime in the instructions. About your resin, it refers to the duration for which the resin retains its viscosity, during which it is still alive and movable. I mixed the Medium Art Pro resin. I just showed you the bottle. It's already warm. Warm, 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 just like that. Mix it well so that there are no droplets and so that the resin gains viscosity. The volume can be directly poured into the breakwater, meaning it's not necessary to wait for the resin to heat up here. Then pour it out. This will result in a lot of bubbles, so it's better to pour it out immediately and let it gather there. It will take a bit longer, but it's more reliable. Pour the volume. I will literally leave a little bit for the white resin. I will need it for the petals. And also read carefully the allowed volume for pouring your artistic resin because there is a certain thickness at which the resin might bubble. Therefore, let's also look at the instructions to see at which thickness your resin will behave well. If you know what your resin is like, or if you're using it for the first time and you're unsure how well it produces bubbles, then pour it in layers. First a puddle, remove the bubbles. Another puddle, remove the bubbles. Yes, this way you will remove the maximum amount of bubbles. You can also pre-warm the resin, that is. Component E, component A, can be placed near a heat source or under hot water. So I pour, you see I have different shapes here. I really want to show you as many shapes as possible. So you could see in what forms, how Petri behaves and how, how it will look overall. Here I have a palm dish. This has been my favorite lately. We will pour it using the Petri technique while the rest of the dishes, and also it is imperative, guys, to remove bubbles before you pour the Petri because then you can't remove them because Petri art can flare up a lot. We will now also make a slightly complicated version on this version. Why? Because I want to do, to make it as nude as possible, I need to dilute the ink with isopropyl alcohol. The ink that I will use will be diluted and the rest I will pour out in its pure form. So I take the yellow ink and give it a really good shake. I'm only preparing the amount of ink that I'll actually use. I take the isopropyl alcohol and mix it with the ink, diluting it like this. Diluting ink is one of the first techniques you learn when drawing with inks. If you want a lighter color, you simply take the ink and dilute it. That's exactly how it works here. That is, we take alcohol to dilute. I'll pour alcohol everywhere right away. You can dilute it one to one. It all depends on what saturation you want to achieve. That is, what density, brightness and contrast you're going for. But if you are working with ink for the first time, then of course it's easier to use the classic colors that have already been made by manufacturers. So you don't have to worry about it. You can start working with them right away and you will see the desired result. I personally work with Pinata and Craft Inks. The next point that is very important when working with ink and resin is humidity. Since the ink is super sensitive to humidity, super finicky, and it will just lay down, not what you want. There's a concept called amine blush. This is not an amine blush. It's more like... Anyway, please be careful and monitor this. 
as it's the first thing you should control and check in your workspace. So now the white resin, shake the white ink well and I'll pour it literally. You can drip the ink from a bubble or even from a pipette. I spill it in the desired area, in the zone where I want my color spots to be. Here's blue, let's add yellow. You can spill a little directly from the glass, no worries. Pink, well this is a unique color. It's called sangria. Brown and some more yellow. I want a pure saturated color. So now we take the white, the white ink. Shake the white ink well beforehand, then drip it into the areas where you spilled your colors. We dig into those zones with our white ink. This looks super impressive and funny. Now look at how it appears in the pure color. We manipulate the ink as we need to get the colors we want. The effect of this technique depends on the ink thickness, which is something you have to consider. It's not like we give it, let it disperse. There's a handle, so I want to drip in another stream. There is, and I'm also dripping in white. Well, in my hand, everything is complicated by the fact that I've got it like this. With a notch, so I'll lift it up a little, let the resin go in there. When it disperses, let it be on your finger everywhere you need it until I leave it. Further, pour into the first more delicate version, pour the ink again. And I specifically want to make a black and gold center in this version because then I'll make a flower out of it. So, I'll make a middle here. There is, let's get back to our base. You see, we're pouring slowly, not rushing, not getting distracted by anything. So purple, orange, and white. So I'll make two layers. I won't add too much. So now I have a handle. Here's a handle. Look, if you want to make some kind of super unusual effect, then I also advise you, I'm just going to do it in my hands. You can reach in with a toothpick and make some curls. But I won't get into these techniques, into these, into my palm. Well, I'll have to climb in because it has such an unusual shape. And in order for it all to turn out beautifully, I'll need to make the resin get in there, seep into the places where it's needed. 